Hey, in today's video, we're going to talk about the four different methods you can use to cut EMT, electrical pipe, and rigid conduit. We're also going to have a race to see which one cuts fastest and which one has the best overall cut, checking for straightness in burrs. And then I'm also going to end the video with showing you how to ream uh, pipes and get all those rid of those burrs and explain why each one of these tools has a place in your toolbox. So first we're going to test which tool can cut the fastest and has the best overall cut. We'll cut it on half inch rigid conduit. So no photo finish needed here. As we can see, the Sawzall cut the fastest, but it didn't have the best cut overall. It still got second. The tube cutter had the best cut overall, but it was a little bit slower. The hacksaw was more like a rice burner. It was going, making a lot of noise, but it really wasn't going anywhere. And then the bandsaw, it cut quick, but overall the cut was not very accurate. When I say apprentice level is the hacksaw, the hacksaw is one of the most hated tools because it is more manual labor but I still think it deserves a place in the toolbox because you never know when a battery is going to go dead or you run out of sawzall blades or the bandsaw blade is going to break or the cutting disc on the tube cutter is going to break so it deserves a place in the toolbox because you might need it in a pinch. Using a hacksaw um, make sure you use long strokes when you're making your cuts Make sure you're not putting too much force down because it can break the blade and it's going to catch. When you're changing a blade out, just loosen up this wing nut right here and you can pop that blade off once you get it pretty loose. Make sure that you put a lot of tension on, that, on the blade when you're tightening it back up because as Linux notes, more tension, more cuts. So um, I always hand tighten it until I cannot hand tighten it anymore and then I'll get my channel locks and then just finish it off right there. So here's level two of um, cutting electrical conduit. In this level I would consider this the, the journeyman level. These Both of these tools, the sawzall and the bandsaw are excellent for cutting pipe. Um, a sawzall, if you're working on a lift and you're running half inch, three quarter, one inch EMT and you're trying to install it quickly, the Sawzall is going to be the way to go. It's not going to give you perfect cuts and the edges are going to be a little jagged, which you'll need a reamer to ream out the, uh, those little jagged edges, but it's going to be fast and it's going to be easy. Okay, The bandsaw is a lot bulkier, um, but I would still consider it at a journeyman's level because it is great for cutting larger pipe. If you're running two or three inch pipe or if you're running rigid pipe that is very thick and might be a little bit, a little bit much for a sawzall, then you would want to go with the bandsaw. Okay? When you're using the bandsaw, just make sure you put your make sure you put the pipe up against that stop right there and um, just make sure you are making a good straight cut. You can cut straight with these, but you know when you're running it quick or you're in a tight spot, they're not going to always give you the the straightest, most perfect cuts. So that is why I consider these the second level at the journeyman level. They're great, they're fast, and they do a good job, but this is not going to give you that perfect cut. At the master's level, I would consider the tube cutters the master level, and the reason why I categorize those as master tools is they give you that perfect cut. They're not going to be the fastest, but um, if you need, if you're using like compression couplings or you're trying to get everything perfect and you have the time to work it, then I like to use a tube cutter. Um, they make smaller tube cutters, so this would be for like half inch or three quarter inch. They make larger tube cutters, so if you're cutting like one inch or two inch rigid pipe, definitely want to roll with one of these large tube cutters. You know, you clamp it down, clamp your pipe down in a tri stand. 
when you're using these, you know, you just tighten your, your tube cutter down on to, um, onto your pipe. Don't over tighten it when you clamp it down. If you over tighten it, then um, you have a chance to break these wheels. That is the only downside of these is, you know, the wheels do break it over time. Um, it's not as easy as like just changing on a sawzall blade. You know, you got to get your screwdriver out, take that pin out, and then um, and then change the wheel out. It's not a hard process, but sometimes you don't always have these wheels on hand, um, and they make a bunch of different wheels for different tube cutters. So that is the only downside of these tube cutters. Are they are a little bit slower, and then having the wheels and changing the wheels can be a headache sometimes. Usually a pipe's gonna look like this right here after cutting and it's a lot easier to ream out and just stick it in there. Ream it out, make sure you get you rid, get rid of all those burrs and your wire can fall uh, smoothly through there. If for some reason you don't have your reamer, you can always grab a pair of channel locks and stick them down in there and at least you're getting rid of a lot of those burrs like that and you don't have to worry about um, your wire getting nicked in the future.